Hello, this is Evan, and this is the Nonsensory Podcast. On today's episode, we discuss Sony's plans to stack talent at a new first-party studio for a rumored new Uncharted game. We go over the recent evidence that a generational hike in game prices is looming, and we also get amped for news that cinemas around the country will be opening again soon. Finally, we get sucked up by the Steam Summer Sale, and we discuss how The Last of Us 2 has highlighted the current disconnect between a wide variety of reviewers and the audience. Let's get into it. Greetings and welcome to episode 14 of the Nonsensory Podcast. You can hear our soothing voices every week by finding us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, and Stitcher. But if you'd rather get a look at our beautiful faces, let's face it. <clears throat> ah, face it, face it. You can also find us on YouTube or come check out our regular Tuesday stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash nonsensory. On social media, we tweet at Nonsensory1, and you can find us on Facebook at Nonsensory Podcast. You can also support us on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash Nonsensory Pod. We have four tiers of membership ranging from $1 to $20, and perks range from getting to vote in polls to getting to read a personal greeting at the start of our show. Evan! Joseph! Hi! What's going on, buddy? Nothing, man. Um, Just got back from work, and now we're doing this? Drinking some beers. Drinking getting, some really good beer. Getting foggy with this uh, Ellicottville foggy thing. Unfiltered India Pale Ale. It's really good. Yeah, this is way better than I expected it was going to be. So how how was your weekend, buddy? Uh, it was good. Um, yesterday was 4th of July. Happy 4th, everybody. Happy 4th. Uh, thank you for tuning in after your, I'm sure, busy weekends of possibly inebriation <laughs> um that was kind of us last night <laughs> um yeah <laughs> um just out of nowhere <laughs> it was just like oh i guess we're doing this it was like four hours later just done <laughs> i had to go to bed <laughs> it's like i i work in the morning i have to sleep so i won't take any more shots <laughs> and then sure enough i was like three shots after that is when i went to bed See? um but yeah, we I played a bunch of Last of Us yesterday, and nice, nice, oh nice. man, I'm just gonna keep giving my my temperature update on that game because I am I think okay, so I'm on chapter four, five, something like that, um, and I feel like if I was gonna dislike the game in the way that it's going, I would have done it by now hmm. because there's a There's a whole big shift um, that I've gotten to, and I'm still enjoying the hell out of it. So I I think that I can give, like, I mean, again, I'm not done with the game, but I really am loving it, um, and I can't wait to finish it. So good. So that was it. You know, I just relaxed, played the game, drank some, drank a little bit, and then played some bocce ball. Back to it. Yeah, man. Bocce. The bocce kit that we got is. Very heavy, like the balls. <laughs> so heavy. Um, um, so, so uh, yesterday uh, was the fourth. Uh, not to you guys, but to, to us. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I had like two or three beers. And that, was, that was it. But mm-hmm. we we did. You know, James got to go in the pool, and we got to see live fireworks and everything. And we had big a big. Uh, get together and food and everything. It was awesome. That's cool. uh, but uh, so I love guns. Uh-huh. I love guns a lot. Were you guys shooting guns? <laughs> oh yes. Oh man, <laughs> dude. There was probably there was probably like uh, fifteen of us, and Holy we shit. had enough guns to start a small war. And what? we just where were you? Sh- what were you shooting at? Uh, we have a he, they have a range in their backyard. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, they like a homemade setup, like but that's, really nice range. That's tight. Do you get to fire a bunch of different guns? Oh yeah, like I think I shot every gun that was there. What was there? Uh, so <clears throat> he had a bolt action of some sort that I don't know. I think it was a uh-huh. uh thirty odd six or a three oh eight something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then he had four different ARs. Okay. Of various kinds and they were wonderful and then i had my i had my guns i have two handguns mm-hmm. and then he had a couple of handguns and 
But like at one point we were so we were basically like competing with the fireworks down the road. Oh yeah. They were setting off early fireworks. That one's mine. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. Sorry. Go and on. So we were going back and forth shooting and then like we decided we were gonna have like a big blowout right at the end and had everyone stand in a line and just <laughs> lit like off. Like your at, your grand finale, yeah. Yeah. We just shot off every round that was left. Somebody, all at once. somebody threw a grenade. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> It was very loud. It was great. <laughs> Nobody lost any limbs. Yeah, no. It, I mean, we were very responsible. I think uh, anybody who's concerned about uh, safety and stuff, you'd be pretty impressed with how tightly we run it. It wasn't like shoot. that. It wasn't like that couple standing outside of their house. No. Where the, what idiot? Where the lady's just like standing there with her gun just pointed at her husband's face. Yeah, and her <laughs> finger on the trigger. Yeah. Like, completely irresponsible. Yeah. Please, if you own a gun, get some, like, get, take at least A class on how to handle them properly. Anyway, it was a blast. Yeah. I had a lot of fun. Um, the, <clears throat> the last time that we went shooting. Yes. Which we need to do again. Yes. Um, man, it was fun. It's just, it's just a relief. I don't, Look, I don't know what it is. It's just cool to be like, I'm going to see if I can hit this target and then have this thing just bam. You know, it's, it's I don't know. It, yeah, it is. It is wild. If you are opposed to guns, I mean, anyone can feel how they want to feel. But if you're opposed to guns, I'm betting you've never shot one. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, and, uh, and again, it's uh, we don't want to get too into it, but yeah. I, I I like the aspect of it of like as it being a recreational thing to do. Yeah, you know, I I really it's think, fun. Think it's a lot of fun. So it does require being very responsible, though. Shall we get into today's yes. news, Joseph? Do you? Uh, I think you take. Shall first I go? Story? Shall I go first? Are we nominating me? Yep. It's, I feel so honored to be your nominee. Um, so Sony is apparently uh, stockpiling soldiers for their secret top top, top secret <laughs> volcano layer. This is according to Joe. <laughs> um, but Sony is apparently hiring uh, some, uh, some new first-party developers for a not-so-secret new first-party studio. Um, this is from Sammy Barker at Push Square. It's probably the worst kept secret in the industry at the moment, but Sony has a new first party team based in San Diego, and it's expected to be working on the Uncharted franchise. As a reminder that the studio continues to recruit talent, Naughty Dog environment artist Zach Oliver, who most recently worked on The Last of Us Part Two, has joined the team. Oliver made the transition to visual arts studio group last month, presumably having completed his work on Ellie's sophomore adventure. He'll serve as senior environment artist on an unannounced project, which many expect to be some kind of Uncharted sequel or spinoff. While the VASG division, the, I guess that's the visual <laughs> arts studio group, Vask. Is, Vask. is primarily responsible for motion capture. The Japanese giant has been building a development studio off of it. Quote, PlayStation Visual Arts has a new game development team in partnership with major Sony studio, said PlayStation talent acquisition lead Fiona Cherbach in a Twitter post a couple of years back. It's been staffing up pretty hard ever since, and we'd expect it to have something to show within the next 18 months or so, presumably for PlayStation 5. Uh, this is this is the Vazage. So, Vazage. I ashamedly am going to admit that I I have the Drake collection, and I have... Un ashamedly? Sh let, me, let me get to the shame. <laughs> you gotta let me work to the shame, Joe. Okay, sorry. I, I, have the, I have the collection that they released for PS4, and I have the uh, Uncharted 4 that came with my PS4. Yes. Because um, that was what I got. It. Like the, Yes. Uncharted had just come out, and that was the bundles that were out. Um, you had to have gotten it around the same time we did then. Cause I, I think I'm pretty sure. I, didn't we get it like within a couple like a couple months of us? I think within a few days, probably. But um, anyway, go ahead. So I haven't played any of them, though. I played Uncharted 1 almost to completion, um, but then I just stopped to completion. <laughs> I, I stopped uh, playing it, and I really... Wow. <laughs> We're on a roll. Just keep going. <laughs> to completion. Um, <laughs> I <clears throat> would like to go back and play all of those games through because... I don't really know what you would draw from this news is like, how do you feel about there being a new Uncharted possibly in development? And I don't know enough about the series, but you have um, played them. You played four. At least I know you've talked. About I've them. I never played the first one. It's the only one I didn't. Play. Yeah, it's usually the one that people say is the weakest that you could probably skip anyway. So I've, I've played two, three and four. I mean, I've heard complaints about I think it's two that a lot of people complain about. Really? Um. <laughs> Just but I, over there. I loved all of them. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I'm excited that they're going to make another one, but I kind of thought they wrapped it up. Yeah, that's the really other question. Nicely. Do you think that they should make another one? Uh, so what would be cool would be... I don't know how much a spoiler and if it's okay to like... There oh, are ways I, they yeah. could go right. that would be cool. I know what you're getting at. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I think you've told me maybe how, how it actually ends or whatever. Yeah. So it could be it could be neat to see more more come out in the series, but I kind of feel like it would be okay if they just left it alone too. Like well, if, they, if it's not an Uncharted that they're doing and they're just going to, you know. Just playing devil's advocate though, they did just go back and everybody's opinions are very split on The Last of Us 2, but they did go back and, you know, make a sequel to a franchise that many people thought that didn't need another game, and they did a pretty good job, so... Um, and that's a good argument. That's a good point. <laughs> and especially with what you're t- what, what, where you were going with that without spoiling it. I, I agree that it, they could do something really cool with that. I think what's neat, uh, what, what's interesting about this story is not so much the game, like the gaming side of it so much as just Sony is like Sony is continuing to grow like yeah. they're like this they've got their tentacles and so many pies and they're just well I Sony's think they enormous. need to you know I, uh, because they are so tied into their first party and like that's like their big selling point is like we make these great games that you can't get anywhere else and so and Microsoft went out and bought all those studios not too long ago so I think that maybe Sony was saying, okay, well, we maybe we need to scale up a bit to, yeah, to make sure that we stay ahead of them. I I really like that. That's kind of nice. It's kind of nice because I'm already like Sony's first party offerings. You know, have already hooked me right probably forever. So yeah, and every team that they've built has put out quality stuff. You know, um. I don't think that there's been like a failure of a first party studio from Sony yet. So, um, shall we continue? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, move on to some, well, a little bit more Sony ish news. (laughs) Yeah. It's going to be a little Sony heavy. I think this episode, um, unfortunately, well, I don't know about unfortunately, but it's just how it goes. Right. Horizon zero dawn shoots up the steam bestseller list. Not like, (laughs) <laughs> but but like <laughs> get out of awesome. here johnny <laughs> this is also sammy barker at push square um <clears throat> it's not a huge surprise given the pro, uh the profile of the title but horizon zero dawn has shot straight to the top of steam's bestseller list following this week's release date announcement in case you missed it the title will launch on pc uh on the 7th of august and it'll also be available on the Epic Game Store if you prefer to do your shopping there. Uh, in the UK, the Gorilla developed role playing game is currently outselling discounted copies of Football Manager 2020, Doom Eternal, and Halo The Master Chief Collection. Not bad company to have. We'll still need to wait and see if this unprecedented endeavor pans out well for PlayStation, but, it surely, but it'll surely be buoyed by the early signs. So. Um, they haven't got my purchase yet, but it's coming. <laughs> August 7th, that's not very far away, and that game, it's just too good. And it's I want to see it on PC. That's one of those, that's one of those rare games where um, I'm willing, I don't know if I'll be able, but I am willing to buy two full-price copies. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just I bought it full-price when it came out, and then I bought the DLC when that came out, and when this comes to PC... If I am able, I will buy a full price copy on PC because it's so good that they deserve that return. You it's know, kind of tangentially related, but I'm the news of the release of uh, Death Stranding on PC kind of has <laughs> me intrigued. It what? kind of has me intrigued. I feel like I might enjoy it more sitting at my desk, kind of you know alone, not on the couch. I don't. I don't know. There's it. it you, I, okay. I feel like I no, gave the, no. I didn't give that game a chance. You make a point. There that's an interesting thought. There are games that are more suited to different environments. Mm-hmm. That is mm. when you 
that does seem like a game that you're more better, uh, more better, mo better. You're better off, uh, like being able to be in your head. Yeah, well, it's like a more contemplative kind of game. Yeah, you know, it wants you to. It goes slowly. They, you know, they play like this really pretentious music the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this is low roar from this band, and you should care about it. And I'm just like, uh, I don't need to pull. But anyhow, it pulls okay. me out of the game. But um. Oh, I don't want to trash Death Stranding, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think it's the Kojima thing. It keeps pulling me back. Like it has to be good. You liked all the other ones. Oh, maybe. Wait. No, let's. Let's I'm gonna leave that comment alone. <laughs> maybe we'll maybe we'll mention it in another episode. Um. So for the next piece of news, we have uh, news that Gustavo Fring, uh, Giancarlo Esposito, is the name of the actor. Uh, he playing Gustavo Fring uh, will play a new film. In, wow, I can't even say this right now. What's going on? Gustavo, Fr the the actor that played Gustavo Fring will play the new villain in the new Far Cry game. Question mark. This, question mark. This is from uh, Brett M Makadonsky. Yeah, I'm glad you got this article. At Destructoid. <laughs> I didn't have to try to say that. I'm not glad that I got this article. I can't even get through it. I'm just fumbling around this like is, an idiot. This is from Destructoid. Coming in here pumping doorknobs um in recent if recent rumors pan out the breaking bad universe will be able to lay claim to two of far cry's key villains before his biggest bat uh, before his biggest break as nacho varga in better call saul michael mondo voiced voss in far cry 3 now it seems as though drug kingpin disguised as chicken man gus fring <laughs> is ready to leave his mark too in an interview with collider Actor Gian Giancarlo Esposito acknowledges in passing that he's working on a major video game. This video game I did, which is going to be huge, but I can't really mention it, Esposito says. Everyone has just simply accepted that he's the villain in Far Cry 6. It's just what makes sense. However, in a now-deleted article, Games Game Reactor flat out states that Esposito's role he teases is, in fact, in the next Far Cry. It's impossible to tell if this is some sort of embargo-breaking declarative or merely hyper-confident editorializing if it's the latter why pull the article esposito's alleged involvement is sort of putting the cart in front of the horse because we don't even know for sure that far cry 6 exists but once again everyone has just sort of accepted that it probably definitely does we're rumored to get a full-blown reveal during the ubisoft forward stream on july 12th and hearing esposito's voice front and center seems exactly how this will go down for a double dose of meth up Albuquerque, Mondo has also <laughs> teased a return to Far Cry, so we might get two Better Call Saul stars for the price of one. I'm so excited I could burn down a chicken shop. <laughs> um, that was in the article. That was that. No, that's I, that I was wish for me. I could just burn down a KFC right now. I'm so I, excited. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I I mean I wish I could claim this writing. That was actually really good. I like that article, but. How do you, how does this make you feel? Um, I really like. First off, Michael Mondo in Better Call Saul is fantastic. Oh yeah, um, Nacho is the man. I don't need to tell anybody that Gus is cool too, because um, everybody knows that. But um, I don't know. I I I I like. They feel the Far Cry games to me are like James Bond, where like. Instead of you playing James Bond, who's a established character that's the same throughout, you're just, you know, you in these games or whatever. Maybe you have a backstory or something like that, but that changes. But they also focus so much in on the villain, you know, and like the the switching between them of of each of the games is kind of like, you know, focused so much on the villains as well. Like the Far Cry 3 trailer was, you know basically vast the whole time mm -hmm. same thing with four uh, where the uh, what was his name i forget the name but troy baker voiced him but um they they always do like this opening trailer where they focus more on the enemies than like the character that you actually play and it's got that same sort of continuous throughput with it where it's it's always well here we're going to show you the villain first and that's what's going to get you stoked on it and I, I think it, that's like a safer bet. Yeah, because, because he you plays can really turn, and everything. Too. Well, no, because you can really turn someone off if you portray the wrong kind of character that you're going to play. Right, but if you're because portraying you want, the enemy that you want to fight, yeah, that's much easier. Yeah, 
Um, how do you, I don't know, how, when's the last time you played a Far Cry game? Uh, I think I played Far Cry Primal, which I know was like a big departure. Yeah. I think, in the yeah, that one was strange. For um, And then I played maybe like five minutes of, I think it was four. Mm-hmm. I played like five minutes of it. That's all of my Far Cry experience. And like when I played Primal, I think I pre- played for like two hours. That was <clears throat> because Colin got it on his Xbox. Mm-hmm. I played the first Far Cry, like the very first one that came out, like in the early 2000s, and then, then I played three. And um, I don't know. I I like that they're putting Gus in this game because I, I love yeah uh, Esposito. He's a great actor. Um, yeah, that's that's more to me what like the what makes this news really cool because like he is awesome. I love his voice too. So yeah. like having that, him bringing his voice to a game. Yeah. Like, I'll be interested. Really exciting. Uh, I think that he'll do a good job. I don't doubt it, but I also am interested to see if it translates. Yeah. Um, but like uh, the live action jungle book that they did, I think it was 2016. Mm-hmm. He is, I believe he's one of the wolves. Oh, okay. He's either the wolf or he is um, the the evil tiger. What's the name of the tiger? I can't believe I forget. Mean Stripes. I don't know. Um, Stripey Mean but Mean. He did really awesome in that movie. Um, and, that, you know, that was all voice, so that was cool. Um, so, I don't know. I just think it would be neat. I think, I mean, he plays an awesome villain. We already know that. I, mean, I, I like that they're kind of implying that like he's going to um, they say uh, Esposito's alleged involvement is sort of putting the cart in front of the horse. Um, oh, hang on. Wait, no, no, no. That's not what I was. Either way, I think that it's it's kind of like that Keanu thing from uh, Cyberpunk where they're just like, you know, maybe maybe when they do their whole uh, Ubisoft forward or th- whatever, they'll have like him in the video and kind of like. He'll be the front and center kind of thing where, you know. Yeah, I think they're definitely going to try to um, use him to sell that event. (laughs) The Keanu thing with with Cyberpunk was like this very, like, specific moment. Yeah. Uh, It'll it'll be hard to, like, replicate that. Um, I don't think... I mean, Espedito is an awesome guy and everything, but I don't yeah. think he, he he doesn't have quite the same selling power. I don't think as no, Keanu Reeves. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah. um, That's a fair point, but still really cool. <clears throat> and I mean, before I get a lot of hate, understand like Keanu Reeves has like probably what four times the amount of on screen, like just time. He's been a leading level actor for a long time. Since you know, like, like we, the late eighties. I'm sure that like if I went back and looked at Esposito's like career and his filmography, mm-hmm. I'm sure he was like acting a long, long time ago. But as far as we're concerned, like most people know him from Breaking Reason, Bad that yeah. came out in the late two thousands, you know, so it's like and Keanu Reeves has been doing this forever. Yeah. So he's, he's been the guy since like and the guys, it's like Point Break and Bill and Ted's and stuff, you know. Yeah. So, um, Point. I went back and watched Point Break. My, maybe like two months ago. My condolences. Is it bad? I don't know. I've no, never actually seen no. Point Break. Okay, it's a '90s movie, and you have to go into it like <laughs> this is a '90s movie, mm-hmm. and you'll like it. If you're like comparing it to movies today, you're going to be like, "Wow, this is really cheesy." Yeah. <laughs> but that was the '90s. <clears throat> right. Right. I, th- I that's what I was going to say is that it's super cheesy. I kind of want to watch it now. Gary Busey. <laughs> oh no, anything with Gary Busey I'm all about. Today's episode is brought to you by Tales from the Arcanist and the Arcanist.io. The Arcanist serves up bite-sized science fiction, fantasy and horror from independent authors all over the globe. Everything is about a 5-minute read or less. So these little bite-sized tales are easy to binge when you have a moment on your lunch break or perhaps when you're planted firmly on the toilet. The Arcanist also has essays about modern culture, the art of writing, the history of fiction, and much more. 
Their weekly fiction podcast, Tales from the Arcanist, is a similarly bite-sized listen that collects two stories, one brand new and one from their archive, and delivers the spooky and strange fresh to your ears. To check out thearcanist.io or to submit a work of your own, visit the link in the description. You can find their podcast, Tales from the Arcanist, there as well. Or find it on Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, or Apple Podcasts. Um, so, gaming price hikes are coming. This is by Chris Carter at Destructoid. Um, hold on, i got to find where this jumps down. Okay, a line has been drawn in the sand. Well... Uh, will other publishers follow? Stay tuned, as this coming generation still has a lot of muck to wade through, uh, like the cost of the PS5 and Series X. As reported by GameIndustry.biz, NBA 2K21 will sport an MSRP of $69.99 on the PS5 and Xbox Series X, a $10 price increase over the respective PS4 and Xbox One editions. I'm sorry. <clears throat> While the current gen console versions of 2K21 will launch this September, the future generation will get their versions this holiday season at that new price. 2K Sports, owned by Take Two Interactive, who in turn owns Rockstar and many other pricey properties, notes that the $10 premium is due to the fact that the new editions are built from the ground up for next generation machines. Although Take Two is seemingly alone in this venture right now, the writing has been on the wall for some time. Multiple industry vet- veterans have called for a price increase. Wow. Increase for a long while. While the $60 standard holding far uh, for far longer than a lot of people expected it to. Of course, with the advent of loot boxes, subscription... Subscription services for gen- uh, genres that traditionally did not have them microtransactions, and DLC, a lot of the standard real t- retail price was baked into that racket. It's seen, it remains to be seen if further legislation will limit the increasing encroachment or if players will end up getting hit with higher retail prices and micros to boot. There's still m- so much to suss out about this gaming uh, coming generation, but at least we will have cross-play and cross-buy to look forward to. And then this was updated... <clears throat> this might be this what happened. Oop. This might be the start of something bigger. Speaking to GameIndustry.biz, research firm IDG Consulting notes that the, that given the last time a price hike occurred was roughly 2005, we are past due for one. IDG notes that a potential $10 increase will only be a 17% hike compared to a 39% increase for firm ticket prices, or a 100% uh, increase for Netflix subscriptions. Of course, that figure doesn't take into account all the extra monetization prospects of games, like they were just talking about with loot boxes. Mm -hmm. IDG says that according to their channel checks, more publishers are looking at a $70 price point, with the concession that not every game should garner that new MSRP. That said, once the floodgates open and the usual suspects, WB, EA, Take-Two, make their move, there's probably no going back. And I would actually rephrase that to there is no going back because things things electronic-wise do not get cheaper. No, yeah. Um, they get cheaper as you look at them like uh, inflation-wise. Mm-hmm. As you look backwards, it, like relatively speaking, things are cheaper. But <clears throat> in actual monies, that just doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so what do you what do you think of, or how do you feel about having to potentially pay seventy bucks for a game? I mean, um, uh, we talked last week about that uh, PlayStation uh, executive that left, who said basically this thing: you know, games cost too much to make and. Well, Unless people want... That was... What I said then was that... Well, I don't know if I said it. I agree with him that games don't need to be super long. If you are if you can write well, you can make a game six, seven hours long and still have an amazing game. Mm-hmm. Um, like quality of writing. Like if you write a really well wrote out game... 
you'll want to play it over and over again. And that seven hour experience becomes a 21 hour experience. Yeah. Um, so I'm cool with that. I just don't want you to sell me a seven hour experience for $70. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm okay with it. If I get what you're saying, once you, once you've kind of, uh, open that box, there's no closing it kind of thing. Um, no, like they said, not all games will <clears throat> warrant an, that higher price. So I'm hoping it is for, you know, your cyberpunks and your Last of Us is where it's actually like, you know, they can, you can understand forking over $70 or something like that. Well, what's a game that you wouldn't fork over 70 bucks for? Give me an example. I don't know. That's hard. That's... That's a hard uh, question. I mean, I think a lot of indie games are already aiming for lower prices anyway, but like if we're talking... <clears throat> so like when Halo Reach came out, okay, if, mm-hmm. if we bumped that up to nowadays and Reach was coming out and they're like, oh, but it's going to be 70 bucks, I'd probably say no, not happening. Okay, <laughs> what about... Like the Uncharted games, those are fair, those are relatively short games, right? But really high quality, right? I still, but I I think that that is exactly yeah. I'd probably say no, it's not a seventy. So you don't game. mind be if a sixty dollar game? You don't mind if it's a short game, and they want to charge you seventy bucks as long as the production is of a high quality. Yeah, if you can show me that that it it's, I don't. I don't the know, effort that's... put in justifies. The seventy yeah. bucks, kind because of I've already said on this on this show how you know hey, uh, Halo, Hollow Knight, like it should be like with the amount of content, yeah, it should probably be a ninety dollar game, yeah, um, not because of all of the iterations of DLC, understand, right? Like it should, that's like easy ninety dollars. I'm just I'm kind of happy that this is happening. Like I don't. An extra ten bucks for me is completely fine. Yeah. Now, like, I've been if, paying the same amount for. I mean, video you have to understand since, if it, if they're not making money off of the business, then there's going to be less people interested in making them. Right. Exactly. It's and, just it's going to be better for over for o- the overall industry. Yeah. Um. So, like, an extra ten bucks here, like, like, I don't buy a whole ton of new, like, brand new games as it is. So that's a fair point. That's kind of it is like if I'm spending an extra 10 bucks on a, on the brand new games that I maybe buy like two or three of a year, like whatever max for me. Yeah. That no, that that's a fair point. We're not talking about about, like, what do you think about the creeping in of the microtransactions along with this extra 10 bucks though? You know, it's like they always try to justify the microtransactions as like, well, we need this to make the extra money because we're only charging 60 bucks. So then like this extra 10 bucks is like, well, they're not going to get rid of the microtransactions though, you know? No, no. I I don't think we'll ever see microtransactions will never go away. It's it's just the worst though. I hate it. I I've, hate that they'll never go away because they're just I have never annoying. spent any money on them. I know, but I just want a feature complete game that I just when I buy it, I buy it. Like I don't want to have to go and buy like I don't want to have to go and spend money to buy credits for weapon skins and stuff anymore. Like that stuff, it used to be so no. fun to grind for that stuff. Yeah. And now, but like to grind in a way that felt good, like you could unlock all the weapons in like Call of Duty four, for instance, in like 20 hours. Yeah. And if you, and, yeah. and have like, and get the, all the skins and stuff. And with this, it's like, they hide all the best stuff behind a paywall. It feels, and, it feels yeah. like a treadmill. Yeah. You know, in those other games, it did not feel like a treadmill. It felt like because they weren't offering those things for purchase back then. No, I agree with you there, especially in Call of Duty. It just it it wants me to have an experience with their game. And then they introduce all these things that take me out of it because they're so transparently well, a, a transaction. And what I, what I don't like about the, the, the way that it's set up in a lot of games is that you are buying credits and not buying the item directly. Like yeah. There are things I'll excuse you being like, you 
you you want to buy this, but then you're like, well, you they have do to, that. You have to you have to buy the things and then use those things to buy the other thing. Why can't I just why? What's with this middle step? It's to obfuscate the whole value that you're that you're yeah. spending though that's the thing yeah, you go the, out and you buy a two thousand credits for i don't know 10 bucks. like 10 bucks or whatever and then something costs you you know like 1400 credits and you're like oh i'll still have like 600 credits left and it's like yeah but you just spent you spent like 750 750 on this on this thing and you you know but you don't it doesn't register as that because in your mind it's points now and i think that's the part that should be illegal yeah you, uh, it, you need to it's have all mind games yeah. yeah it needs to be completely transparent pricing you shouldn't have to do math to figure out what you're spending no well <clears throat> i mean there are people that make the argument like well you should you should be responsible and yeah. yada yada and stuff like yes. that but you know you can only be so vigilant I think, <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, you you should have complete experiences without having to spend more money beyond what you've already put in. Right. Um, I don't mind transactions in free to play games or games that are obviously much cheaper. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you launch, like, let's just take for a moment and say, like, if a Ape- if Apex Legends was a twenty dollar game instead of free to play. Uh-huh. They could still justify having pay, uh, you know, microtransactions in the game because it's still a higher production quality than that. Mm-hmm. But selling me a seventy dollar game and still having transactions, it's yeah, you're starting to hit to like uh, that's not cool. Uh, I just i've I've decided what we're going to call this episode. Um. Oh, should I spoil it? I don't know. Should I? No. Uh, they're gonna have seen the title. By oh, this that's point. right. Uh, 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 okay. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna call it "Take a Hike." Ooh. There you go. There you go. See Ooh. this? I'm just letting you in on I my l- creative process. Well, I, I heard like- the word "hike" and then I was like, oh, "What else do you do with hikes?" <laughs> <laughs> no, I. I brilliant. <laughs> I think it's brilliant because you're following up an episode that titled "Like and Subscribe" with "Take a Hike." Yeah, take a hike. Yeah, <laughs> I love like that. and subscribe, and then take a hike, sister. Okay, uh, moving on. Yeah, I think we spent enough time on that one. Um, so uh, there's a bunch of news in regards to PlayStation and indies. Um, this, this is from cool. this is from an article from Games Radar by multiple authors: uh, Ben Tyrer, Austin Wood, and Connor Sheridan. Um, PlayStation just highlighted nine new indie titles for PS5 and PS4 coming as part of its new PlayStation Indies initiative. President of SCE Worldwide Shuhei Yoshida took to the PlayStation blog to announce that the new program. He wrote, With PlayStation Indies, we hope to spotlight and support the best of the best indie games being published on PlayStation in the entire indie community as a whole. Our goal is to make PlayStation the best place to develop, find, and play great indie games. That commitment will also stretch to PS Now with the service offering a new indie experience each month. While details are still forthcoming, we are also happy to confirm a new indie title will join the PlayStation Now service every month, starting with Hello Neighbor in July, Yoshida confirmed. And what better way to mark the occasion of announcing a new initiative than to showcase some of the games that are part of it? Here are all nine games headed to PS5 and PS4. I'm going to interrupt you real quick. So when I made the document, I actually cut out all the descriptions for each game because it would run really long. Uh So now we just have the names of each of these games, and you can look into it further if you'd like, or you can actually find this article and do more reading. But do you want to start with the first one, and we'll just alternate? Sure, yeah. Uh, Fist, F-I-S-T, Fist, Forged in Shadow Torch. Sounds weird, but it looked kind of cool. Maquette. Uh, Where the Dark Is. Heart. Where the where the heart is? Oh my! <laughs> Creeks. <laughs> where? Okay. Where? Where the, my brain is? <laughs> I don't know. If you find it, let me know. Where? Where the dark is actually sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Where the heart is? I'm like, oh, what are we? Is this from Hallmark Games? <laughs> Um, <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Did you say creeks? I did. Okay. Heavenly bodies. 
Sorry, I, I am supposed to wear glasses for reading, so forgive me. Recompile. Uh, Carto. Haven. And Worms Rumble. Yes. So, uh, I guess there was a shakeup in, I think we talked about this this year at some point. There was a shakeup where Shuhei had basically gone to do exactly this thing, which was to work with indies. Yeah. Um, and we're already kind of seeing the, the fruits of that, and which makes me really happy because Shuhei is like such a great figure in Sony and in the gaming community. Oh, yeah. Um, as, as a whole. And I just beloved. I would say. I wouldn't hate. I would hate to see him kind of like become like another. There are past Sony execs that people really like that have kind of gone on and faded into the background and stuff. And I'm I'm happy that Shuhei is gonna still be like making announcements like this and working and like his his direct involvement is known and will be seen by the end user um, because I think that he does great work and I'm. I'm actually wondering um, how well this is going to work out for Sony. Okay. Elaborate, Joseph. Um, Nintendo has kind of taken over the indie space. Yeah. Well, if yeah. you if you jump on and you, like you jump onto the Switch's um, um, what do they call their storefront? Whatever. You get on the Switch storefront and it's like indies oh yeah like all of them yeah I, if i, if I hmm, like hollow knight on the switch mm-hmm. yep oh. want it please yeah dude mm-hmm. maybe i'll buy a switch Lite. i i would recommend it the only thing is you brought up a good point and this is like we're we're stepping out a little bit yeah here. sorry sorry but that's okay. my consumerism got in the way <laughs> maybe I should buy that. um the only reason like there are there are trade offs either way if you get a switch or a switch light, uh, the price point is nice, but you have to bear in mind, and you're the one that pointed this out to me. Oh yeah, if the you get a yeah. switch light, you can't replace the controllers, and there is a notorious problem with uh, stick drift, and you'll be stuck with it. You'll have to buy a whole new system. Get my stick drift. Here, what else yeah, um, um, <laughs> but I don't think Sony's going to be able to compete with the switch. With no, in, in, with indies. I mean, I think that they just need to make sure that they are always a platform that they that indies want to come to. Yeah. Um. You know, because yeah, like the 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 nature of the switch makes it perfect for indies. Yeah. Um. And I just I think that it's good to just have those offerings as well as the switch, so that if people do have your system, then they don't have to go to the switch for those those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I'm not saying they won't peel off some people. Yeah, but. and this the article doesn't really say that if they're like exclusive indies or if they're just getting there's just like nine new games that they're gonna have and they're all indies. You know, like I don't know if I, I that's what I'm thinking. I think PlayStation is trying to uh, tailor themselves to them, not like make them exclusive. And they're adding them to PS now, which is yeah. also good. But like. I get wanting to have a variety of content that makes sense, but if if you're going to tie it in with PS Now, I think you want to have like bigger name games to draw people in. Yeah. You, I don't think a single title on here is ma- is going to make someone go, ooh, I have to have PS Now now. What, you don't <laughs> want to play uh, Baguette? Or whatever it is? <laughs> ba- M- Baguette or where the, where the, where the dark is? <laughs> <clears throat> Heavenly Bottle. I don't know. Heavenly Bottle. B- bottles. <laughs> Should we just mulligan on this whole day? I feel like we should. <laughs> Heavenly bottles. That sounds like like cans or bottles. <laughs> Heavenly cans. Doesn't have the same ring to it. Well, I don't know. Um, <laughs> okay, moving on. Joseph, this next piece. This one I am yes. so excited about. Yes. I, I can't I can't wait. If when when we can do this together, well all of us. Oh, I can't wait. Are you a fan of wrestling that lives in the Pittsburgh area? Do you enjoy punk rock? How about diversity and inclusion? Well, Enjoy Wrestling, a new promotion set to launch in 2020, is here for you. Though they're a startup, the folks at Enjoy have years of experience booking punk shows, promoting bands, and putting out records. They're also pretty well-versed in wrestling, too, 
having done commentary, videography, graphic design, and social media for many high-profile independent companies. Enjoy Wrestling wants to bring the most talented wrestlers out there to Pittsburgh, regardless of gender, race, or sexual orientation. That same ethos applies to their audience as well, as they strive to create an inclusive and diverse wrestling community aimed at developing a supportive environment for marginalized fans. You can find Enjoy Wrestling on Twitter, at Enjoy Wrestle, on Instagram at Instagram.com slash Enjoy Wrestling, or you can contact them directly via email at EnjoyWrestlingPGH at gmail.com. I have a feeling this one's going to get walked back, but this is my article, it I probably believe, right? will. Yeah, yeah, it is. So this is by Bradley Russell at Games Radar. Um, Russell! You're going <laughs> to... You're gonna understand our excitement in a little bit, but <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna start off this article with this is me speaking. All of these cinemas have their gar- guidelines and precautionary measures available to read on their respective sites. That being said, the article goes on to say, "The movie starved among you will surely be counting down the days until cinemas open their doors once more, but with an." ever fluid situation that has already seen pushbacks and rescheduling in recent weeks the opportunity to step inside a theater this month is suddenly looking far less likely with many delaying the chance to reopen entirely but we do have some news on when u.s theaters will open the alamo draft house has not said yet okay so that's to be announced. But is that got... a specific theater somewhere? or is I it... don't know. I think it's a chain. Is it a chain? Okay, it's not so it's a I'm southern chain that I probably don't know of. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but It sounds like a bar. It does. Like, I'm can like, I get a steak mm, at this place? Mm, yeah. Mm. You want a blooming onion at the Alamo, Alamo Draft House? All right. Uh, well, I think that's a that's a Outback only, you know, the blooming onion. Uh, Everybody, they're, they're universal, Joe. Bloomin well, on, Bloomin onions but transcend call, cultures. But <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, um, AMC is reopening July 30th, 450 locations. So look into it. See if one near near you. Um, 450 locations. Wow. Safety measures include masks. Uh, hand sanitizer masks are required hand sanitizers and wipes available screens at 30 percent capacity so every other row is yeah, blocked off right. so we were we were kind of uh, speculating on how that would work mm-hmm. and, um, cinemark is reopening on july 24th um, also masks required there will be hand sanitizer available and staff will wash hands every 30 minutes which i think is a, that's a little bit uh, but okay and reduced capacity <laughs> they don't say how much why didn't they just they should have just worded that uh staff will have a, a break to go check their text every 30 minutes because that's what people are gonna, they're gonna be like oh i gotta go wash my hands five minutes later does it really take you five minutes to wash your hands come on now. anyhow go on, sorry. um <clears throat> and regal will reopen on july 31st all locations now cinemark didn't say yeah i was gonna say that there wasn't anything for cinemark huh um, but Regal will be reopening all locations July 31st. Uh, employees and guests will be required to wear masks, hand sanitizers avail- available, screens at half capacity, and two empty seats between every group. Now, I like that. Okay, so we can sit together as like a big family, and then yeah. they then there's three, t- t- sorry, two seats between us and the next group. Yeah. That's cool. I like that. Yeah, we just like plan. <laughs> That's exactly what we. We were need saying. to get. We need to get a big enough group to just plant ourselves in the middle of an aisle, so that <laughs> there's. We take up everything except like the two in the end. <laughs> um, what do um. You what do um, <laughs> so if you're uh, required to wear masks? Do you think it'll be like really easy for me to sneak in candy in it? Like if I just can I just fill my mask with M and M's and they they <laughs> can't stop me. There and he's... Every, I'm, they're like, uh, what, what what ticket would you like, sir? Mm-hmm. And I'm like one for whatever, and it's, all you hear is just the cl- cl- the clattering of M and M's in my face. It'll it'll sound like a... sorry my the the movie butter <laughs> the the popcorn butter is actually burning my skin and seeping through my mask, and I really need to take it off and just throw it on the ground. Oh, I just. I love that idea. I'm just going to stuff my mask with goobers. And just... 
<laughs> oh, okay. Hey, um, Joe, why is the PS5 so big? <clears throat> well, you know? why don't you read this next article, Evan? Oh, Stephen Wright from GameSpot knows why the PS5 is so big. Um, Ooh, many PS5, people were... you're so big. <laughs> Ooh, look at you with your big old muscles, PS5. Come over here. <laughs> I started got it by Fran Dresser thing. Fran Dresser impression. Fran Dresser. <laughs> That's her name. <laughs> Fran Dresser. Okay. Um, many people were surprised by the striking design of the new PS5, which abandons the black box design of recent console generations for bold curves and a striking Ooh. black and white color scheme. Ooh, why are you so big with those bold curves? Well, it didn't take long for players to start making memes about the appearance of the console. Others have noted its increased size over its predecessors the ps4 and even the original fat ps3 hey yeah don't call it fat that's rude i mean it just had a bulge (laughs) oh oh. that has all right the giant size (laughs) the giant size is according to one sony employee because the console generates an enormous amount of heat with that much power comes a need to keep the system cool and a huge case was necessary when one commenter asked on LinkedIn why the console is so bulky, as spotted by VG247, PlayStation's vice president of UX design, that's user interface design, Mac, or, sorry, user experience design, Matt, Matt McLaren replied, Thermals, this gen is little super, supercomputers. While the 7 nanometer process delivers amazing heat performance for the power, the power is very extreme. However, there might be other reasons for the large size. A leaked patent seems to suggest that Sony is building a cartridge that might or might work with the PS5. Some of observ- some observers have speculated that it's an ex- external solid state drive that will slot into the console for memory management. But there's no official word if that's the case. We still don't know how much the PS5 will cost or the PS5's full lineup of games, but odds are likely that more details will come out over the coming weeks. Most of its announced first-party games are also not going to be ready for launch. However, it should receive plenty of third-party support out of the gate. <laughs> Damn it. This includes sports games like Madden and NBA 2K, and presumably the Call of Duty series. Some of these will be cross-generational releases, and certain publishers are also allowing players to upgrade for free with the, with the new generation becomes available. The Xbox Series X is also a huge console, but it sports the PC-like form factor that is more familiar to players. The console, like the PS5, can be placed over... Blah, 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 power. <coughs> blah, blah, power. Blah, power. 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 Stands horizontal and ver- vertical. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> so the reason I thought this was worthy of being talked about uh, like who cares how big the systems are? I don't care. Uh, but this idea, the part that has me like, ah, oh, is this idea that maybe we're going to have uh removable and replaceable, expandable solid state drive space. Well, they, they already cool. said that they're going to whenever they, whenever they announced it and they were talking about it, or they had that Mark Cerny talk for it was like an hour. Um, <clears throat> and he said that you'd be able to slot in, extra uh m.2 drives that are ssds that you basically buy you can buy already as long as they were up to the speed so like you're they already said that you could do this but what it seems like is that they're talking about like an actual cartridge kind of like the xbox series x where they had those Mm -hmm. you know specially made you know that's something that you couldn't just buy in a pc part place or whatever well i mean with what they're doing with the um, with their drives, I imagine they'd have to. I just I think that what they said in the article about the thermals is the the true answer because that is why they're bigger. Yeah, the um they they were spending it whenever they were talking about the price initially, and there were rumors that it was costing more specifically because they needed to have this like. Expen- more expensive cooler for how hot this thing was going to be and all that stuff. I, I would imagine that the cooler is also larger, so it's I mean, taking up that space. So No, I <clears throat> absolutely. The reason that they're bigger is because they're, they run hotter. I mean, these systems are ridiculously powerful mm-hmm. for gaming systems. I'm just trying to visualize where it would go. Like, is it like a port in the back that you would plug this external... Uh, hard drive into or well if you remember how the xbox hmm. <laughs> xbox i just realized hmm. Hmm. Xbox. was it the 
was it the Xbox One? No, I have a I have a 360. I think uh, yeah, that old big old thing. thing that you chonk on top or whatever. No, no, no. There was actually like it was built into the vent. You pop the vent off, mm-hmm. and you you know pull it right out. It had like a little cord you pull on, and it was really slick actually. Hmm. And you'd never like I didn't even know I could do it until like a year ago. Oh, this is no, a, not this even isn't an Xbox One. No, it was a it was an old 360 that I got. Oh wow! But I like never knew that it was something that I could do, and then I was just fooling around with it. Now I don't know if it was like a special model or whatever. I was gonna say, is this like the black one, like the redesign? I think so. Okay, that makes sense because I'm thinking of the launch Xbox that came with that stu- that, that, s- yeah. that chonky snapper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, this, the the redesign is really awesome because you, it's like. I was just messing around with it, and I'm like, why does it look like this one bit of grill is, like, messed up? And I went to, like, fix it, and it, like, popped off. I'm like, and I pulled this thing out of there, and it was, I was like, oh, that's the hard drive. That's brilliant. Okay. <laughs> and so. I'm taking you to Narnia. <laughs> yeah. So now I look like an idiot on, on the podcast for not having known that. <laughs> oh, whatever. I wouldn't but, have known it either. I, I know that you can add another hard drive to my PS4 that I haven't done yet. Well, I mean, <laughs> you can add externals. Yeah. No, I, I meant like just a bigger internal. You can do that. Without tearing it apart? No, you would have to, that, I mean, yeah, you'd have that's to open the, it up and stuff. But. That's the problem. I want, I want to be able... <laughs> I want to be able to expand the memory or upgrade the you know, the internal without having to rip this thing apart. That was yeah. what was, I always liked about the Xbox. And I think that was the appeal. I th- I think that's the appeal that the Series X has over the PS4 is like, they're talking about how fast this new PS, or sorry, the PS5 uh, hard drive is going to be and what it's going to mean for the games and stuff. And it's like, yeah, but you're only having a terabyte of it. And you, it sounds like you're going to have to open this sucker up to even change it out. That's what I'm and hoping with Series is X is just you know, that's what I'm hoping this is saying. I is hope that so. that's going to be swappable at the very least. Like, then why wouldn't just they cover them it? Out. Why didn't they cover that in the whole first in, in the talk? Because Sony is obviously having problems with marketing. Yeah, obviously their messaging is really confusing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Hope I'm I got I got high ho- hi, hopes. Anyway, uh. <laughs> mm, apple pie. <clears throat> oh, is this me? This, this is you. This oh, <laughs> Steam Summer Sales! Woo! Ooh. Um, I actually didn't link to any. I didn't take anything out of the article yet. Well, the Steam Summer Sale is happening June twenty fifth to July 9th So you have another four days to uh. Well, by two the days. time you hear this, you'll have two days. I'm so sick of having to time travel into the future. To know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Oh, so this is just a list of the best stuff to grab on sale. Oh, so it's still going. Okay. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. It's still happening. Okay. Well, you better hurry up and get out there because there's some good sales out there. I mean, uh, Resident Plague Evil t- 2 for 20 bucks. That's a good deal. That's a good deal. Rainbow Six Siege, Grand Theft Auto Five, Borderlands Three, Red Dead Redemption Two, Disco Elysium, that piece of garbage, uh, A Plague's Tale, Outer Wilds, uh, <laughs> Red Dead for Red Dead Two for forty eight bucks still. That's still a lot. That one's still a lot of money. Doom Eternal's thirty bucks. Ooh yeah, buy that. Hollow Knight is seven fifty. Half Life Alex is forty five. Um, Sekiro is forty bucks. MG Metal Gear Five is six dollars. Okay. Rainbow Six Siege is eight bucks. Eight bucks. Oh, Resident Evil Seven is only ten bucks. I'm buying that right now. Um, I'm literally I'm, keep talking, Joe. I'm logging into Steam <laughs> right now. Uh, so Outer Wilds is seventeen bucks. Resident Evil Two is twenty bucks. Um, you think I'm kidding? I'm not kidding. I uh, no, I know you're not kidding. <laughs> I've I've done this stuff already on the show. If you want to buy that piece of trash, this is this should is this a bucks. new is this a new segment of our show? It's like Evan wastes money time. <laughs> Tabletop simulator. If you like dominoes and like games like that, uh, nine bucks. Let's see. That's pretty cool. 
Hell Divers is ten bucks. Hell Divers is a great game. Forty eight for Red Dead is still a bit pricey. So yeah, it is. <clears throat> by the time you hear this, you'll if you listen to this on Tuesday when it launches, you'll have two days left to get out there and get the games on sale on Steam. <clears throat> so you should do that because there's some good ones. Um, now I say forty eight bucks for Red Dead is Red Dead Two is too much. But I don't mean that that like that. I think it's a game worth spending some money on. I'm just saying, like for a sale, that's yeah, not much yeah, of a it's, sale. I mean, it's been out for two years now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think at this point, I, I I don't know though. Whatever. So that wasn't much of um. That wasn't much of a read for me. So maybe I take the last one. Go ahead. Especially since you're in the middle of something. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is actually our last article. Uh, and maybe we'll oh. launch into some other talk. I don't know. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> so this is by Fraser Brown at PC Gamer. There's some. Oh, my computer just went nuts. Okay. Ubisoft has a lot of games simmering away right now. Some of which we haven't seen for um seen much of for a while but that's likely to change after ubisoft forward the digital conference is taking place later this month but today we got a quick glimpse of some of the games it's going to be showcasing sadly it doesn't look like ubisoft has snuck in anything we weren't expecting with clips of assassin's <laughs> assassin's creed valhalla assassin's creed watchdogs legion and hyperscape which was just unveiled yesterday Neither gods and monsters nor Skull and Bones make an appearance, but that doesn't mean they won't show up in the show. Skull and Bones is the biggest mystery we've... Um, as we've hardly seen anything since it was announced in 2017. Both games have been hit with delays. Then there's Far Cry 6. Ubisoft has yet to confirm its existence, but there are rumors, as we've gone over some of them today, uh, that it's the game being discussed by Breaking Bad's Giancarlo Esposito who will allegedly star in it <clears throat> in this Collider interview. I think that was a link. Ubisoft Forward seems like a good place to break this news uh, 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 officially. Ubisoft Forward takes place on July 12th at 8 p.m. BST, which I have no idea what that means. Uh, British Standard Time. Oh, okay. No, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you, you had me convinced until I realized that... Uh, Stop it. Sorry. You had me convinced until I remembered that Greenwich Mean Time would be British. Yes. Time. Yeah, I did. So. L I had trouble with that because YouTube says it's it's a. Uh... Oh, never mind. Ignore. Did me. I say Greenwich? Greenwich. I'm sorry. <laughs> Greenwich. Greenwich Mean Time. Mm, Greenwich. Mm. <laughs> I've left this. I've left the sandwich in my book bag too long. Now it's a green witch. <laughs> oh, ugh. Oh. Is this okay, baloney. I don't know. Okay, I need you to pull back from this for a moment. Yes, uh, uh, I'm so, oh, dude. I'm I'm the worst. I'm sorry. What's up? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? How do you feel about the Ubisoft event that's coming up? Oh, uh, I'm I'm excited for it because I want to see more of Watch Dogs Legion. Um, I re. <laughs> I really like the first Watch Dogs, and I feel I'm, I'm going to check on Steam while I'm browsing games. But I I should have played two. I have yet to play it, but it's usually yeah, on I sale. I played two yet. Um, I don't know. I have a I have a special place in my heart for for the Watch Dogs franchise, um, and I don't know much of what else I'm excited about. I I, I have no idea. Gods and monsters. Uh, I, I I don't know. They don't have much coming up that really has me excited. I'm I'm always Other down for a good shooter, so like I always look into the new Far Cry, and um, yeah, you know, uh, Assassin's Creed, um, maybe. So uh, not not too excited. Uh, I'm I'm not really that excited either. Mm -hmm. I mean, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, kinda. Well, um, I think a lot of what we're going to see is stuff that was pushed back because remember they had uh, 
after how bad the last um, Tom Clancy game was, they pushed back a bunch of their a bunch of their titles so that they could work on fixing that game because it was in such a bad shape. So I and and we haven't really seen anything <laughs> since. Which then. one was that? That was a. Uh, Tom Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Okay, yeah. Um, that game came out. It was a disaster, and then they pushed the they pushed these other titles back. So I'll be interested to see um, if we see a bunch of newer games, or if it's just going to be more of. I won't. I won't put. Um, we will never point fingers here. <laughs> okay. Or but I will just say that there were reviewers that I like to listen to. Um who raved about how much they liked that game. Really? Uh, before it came out. Huh. And I don't, I don't think anyone's paid for their opinions. No. Um, I'm not going to go as far as making that claim, but I would just, I will just say, but I that always, had you a little, a little fishy. You're like, yeah, <laughs> I, I no, no, I, I always take things that anyone says with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just feel like this is a good opportunity to say, I don't think people are paid for their opinions. I think there are some people who like look at magazines and go, oh, I mean, I think there are definitely instances where you can kind of maybe. Okay, so classically. um... Okay, so I lied. Maybe we'll point a little bit of fingers. (laughs) (laughs) Point away, my friend. Electronics. Electronics Gaming Monthly was a magazine back in the day. I don't know if they just changed to another name. No, I think they still exist in some form. Yeah. But I I remember it was kind of a thing that after a while, like I used to really love reading them. Me and my brother used to like, you know, read every article 30 billion times because that was all of our gaming news. Yeah. Yeah. You just re- you every time you took poop, you just read the same. Yeah. You should read the same issue of a magazine. Um, but I. I remember it got to the point where every time you there was a centerfold, like a center, you know what I mean, like game. Yeah, yeah. Or I'm sorry, every time you'd look at the advertisements across the magazine, okay, and it would be for one particular game. It would get rave reviews in that article, and then skip forward like two months, Mm -hmm. and then they would tell you their actual opinion. Yeah, yeah. It the, (sighs) the previews always sounded so. Well, no, I think it was like here, here we have to talk nice because this is the one that's advertising with us. This month. oh yeah, yeah. Well, there was a. <clears throat> you remember the? <clears throat> maybe you don't, but there was a GameStop uh, reviewer named Jeff Gerstman. The and, name sounds familiar. And he got fired. Basically, GameSpot. Yeah, GameSpot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got fired because he wrote a fairly scathing review over a game that was being advertised on their website and stuff like that at the time. And everybody was like, Oh, you know, like this is why. And then there was, it was up in the air about that. And then it came out that, yeah, that's why. Um, but he's, I mean, he was always kind of pushing the envelope in terms of like how, (laughs) how depreciating he could be over these kind of games. But I, yeah, I'm, there is a line like I'm really, <clears throat> I'm kind of over the scathing review for the sake of a you know, a scathing. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm kind of past that. I used to enjoy it, you know, the occasional like, oh man, they totally trashed that game. I I'll admit I used to uh-huh. like that when I was younger and I would read a magazine, but like, I understand like, if a game has it coming. And some of them do. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> but, like, while, the, I mean, all that being said, <clears throat> I don't think, oh, man, a reviewer is paid for their opinion and firing someone because some, a particular company's advertising with you. I mean, that's definitely, mm-hmm. that's scummy, if you ask me. I mean, you're paying someone for their opinion. Mm-hmm. You hired him for his opinion. Yeah. And then you're like, well, not this time. Yeah, that's we, not We cool. don't want it in this time. Somebody might get mad. <laughs> we don't like that. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so my, my, God, my, my cart is 
slowly ballooning. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay, just the last, leave steam for a moment. The last many, many episodes, what have I talked about the entire time? It would be great if I just had some time to play some games. And I think I'll be able to carve out some time to play The Last of Us. And and, and now I'm like, oh, let's throw like four games into my Steam pile. <laughs> Screw it. Screw it. Well, the great thing about Steam is they can just sit there for a while. I know. That is the great thing. As long as I keep playing on PC, I can play them in perpetuity. It's great. Um, but that's that's not helping. This <laughs> just making it worse. Look, clo- just minimize that for a moment. Let's wrap up the episode. We've gone through all our articles. Let's. Um, so we're talking about uh, um, awful reviews and and people being 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 bought. Um, so because I think there's kind of a thing going on now where uh, I don't know, like how long ago did this happen? Oh, it was a, it was a while. I think it was okay. when I was like still like maybe fresh out of high school. So it was quite a while ago. OK, so I think the newest round of our people being paid for their opinions then has been brought up because of Last of Us must be because I saw this going around on Twitter for a while that, that everyone was like, oh, I can attest that I'm not paid for my opinion and blah, blah, blah. And right. I don't think that they were. No, but that's uh, oftentimes the favorite accusation of folks that want to, you know, tear stuff down is they say, well, of course they said it, that it was good because they were paid for it. And I, actually, you can trust me because I'm I'm dumping on this game like that you want to well, hear. Okay, well, there's merit to the statement, at least because there have been cases. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, you can look to we like that is one thing that I'm proud of in this show that we, you know, we we are completely outside. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, there. Hopefully, maybe with some luck, maybe we'll be a little bit inside. But we we don't have friends in the industry. Yeah. We're not being paid for any advertisements. We, I mean, we're not being paid. <laughs> yeah, at all. We pay ourselves in beer. <laughs> clank, clank, clank! I just nailed your finger. Uh, um, so, what was I? What was I saying? What I don't know. We, we were ranting about paid reviews. Yeah, I don't like. It's nice to be able to say that we're, you know, whatever we say is our honest opinion. Yeah, nobody like, has no nobody influence. Has made me say this. Um. I think that if you were going to not trust certain reviews, I would think that you wouldn't trust the YouTubers, though. Over over a traditional... It depends on how long, <laughs> like... If there's someone who's consistently reviewed games... Like, the review process in general is... Strange. Yeah. Because... No one's going to have the same opinion as you anyway. And so, like, the whole review process, you always have to look at how a reviewer has looked at things in the past. Yeah, that's typically, like, that's 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 why I like YouTube reviews is because I can find reviewers that I know share common, right. common views with myself. It's, and I know if they like a thing, then I will like it because they've liked other things that I've really liked. Like, uh, like if you, what's nice about YouTube and the internet in general, I mean, like, I'm sure it's different now. Like back in the old days with magazines, you couldn't just go back. I mean, I guess you could like pull out old, you could redact something and be, but yeah, it rarely happened. Yeah. What what I mean is like, so right now, if I want if there's a game coming out, like Ghost of Tsushima. Okay. And let's say that there's reviews written about it right now. I could go back into someone's history I could just type into Google or go into YouTube and look up a reviewer's history of reviews. Say, okay, they've basically had the same opinions about all these games that I have. Uh What do they say about Ghost? Right. And then I can kind of glean from their opinion whether or not I should be excited about it. Yeah, that's a fair point. Back in the day, we didn't have that so much because, I mean, I suppose unless you like actually saved mountains of you know yeah. magazines yeah you couldn't just go back and look at someone's opinion yeah um i just i don't trust youtube reviewers specifically because so many of them okay 
there's there's a lot of them out there that review game review games from an ideological standpoint though where like they're anti a certain group of people or anti a certain idea and this this sprouted up in the last of us where i think a lot of people that dislike the game don't like it because ellie's a lesbian don't like it because abby's abby the the other female character in it she's you know jacked and they throw you know they put that front and center um and like there's throughout the entire game women are at the forefront of that entire game there's a trans character in the game and like there's there's sex scenes in it and stuff like that and like people love to hate on that specifically for that and i'm playing through the game like this is all landing for me like i understand that you i i see where people would view it as like pandering and stuff but like I feel like people are jumping on that way harder than it, it actually is an issue in the game because there's a bunch of people out there that love to court controversy for people that are like militantly against that stuff and get them all riled up so that they can get those views and stuff like that. And there was another YouTuber that I watched that was basically like, there's the, the, the commerce of negativity on YouTube is a big thing where you'll see old accounts that used to talk about all kinds of stuff in the in the gaming industry now they're basically like this is why this thing is the worst thing ever every week it's always negative 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 all that kind of stuff and i i i would say that nobody is above reviewing from that perspective and also from reviewing because their audience will get clicks like if you go and read a review at Kotaku you know you're going to read a review at Kotaku that looks into stuff like how our genders represented, how our races represented, and stuff like that. They, they they talk less about like the mechanics of a game, and like how pretty it looks than they do of like, you know, more philosophically big picture kind of stuff. And so like if you want that kind of stuff, that you know that that's where you want to go. Well, <clears throat> that was I guess that would be my argument is if you are someone who. There are, I mean, I think there is def- definitely, there most definitely is negative um, mm. reviewers <laughs> out there and people who uh, cater to those opinions to try to get, trying to just make some money <laughs> off of some people's uh, ideology. Yeah. Okay. If you're someone who agrees with them on those things. And that's, that's like fine, whatever. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, what I'm trying to say is, I mean, people are entitled to their opinions and you can avoid whatever it is that you want to avoid. Yeah. I don't like, I don't, I've, I've said it before. I don't like gore. I have a big problem with gore. It bothers me. Okay. So I stay away from those things. I don't see anything wrong with that, but I'm not going to go out there and bash something that someone wants to play. Right. I'm not sitting here like, don't play Mortal Kombat. Oh, it's awful. Yeah. Like, whatever. I mean, I would say if somebody asked me for my opinion, I'd say don't play it. Yeah. But no one's asking my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I'm just... Uh, it, you just have to bear in mind where people are coming from whenever they give an, a review. Yeah. Uh, um, you're going to get one side from people who are reviewing on in magazines not because they're paid off but because mag Here's a little secret. <laughs> in media people tend to pick from a per a, a certain group of people. Okay, and most of them I mean anywhere you, anywhere that hires people, you're going to pick people who you can tolerate. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, that's that might be a a, a button. Uh, I mean, I know but what you you're know saying. What I, yeah. You're hiring similar like-minded people. You're not going to hire people that you don't want to be around. That doesn't make any sense, right? And if their views completely oppose yours, then you know that you're going to come into conflict, and then why, so you're why not. You why, yeah, why hire them? So of course, magazines are going to tend to be staffed by a certain group of people. On YouTube, you're going to have certain kinds More of voices. Your traditional gamer kind of. I wasn't going to go that far. 
I just I think on YouTube you find a, more, a lot more people that are like, how is this game as a game? Versus yeah. like on some place like Polygon or Kotaku, you're going there and you're looking for the more like, how does this move the industry forward? Okay, what does yeah. this say yes. about the audience and all this? They're more, I wouldn't say they're more analytical about it. That's not the right word, but they're more. They're looking at it from a different perspective. Right. Yeah. Where like somebody, perfect example is the Last of Us review that I did read at Kotaku, which was like, I I don't really enjoy playing this game. Because it makes me commit violence and everybody suffers the entire game and you do nothing but commit acts of violence that are messy and in your face. And I don't want to play a game. I don't want to play a game like that right now because of all the stuff that is hitting us currently with like protests and police brutality and like all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool. This is a perfectly great review for somebody that cares about any of that. And I care about those things, but I am able to separate those things. Like, this is the real world. This is the video games that I play. I don't need my video games to be an escape from the actual world because they are an escape from the actual world, and I recognize that when I'm playing it. So, like, I would go to a review that's more like, here's how the gunplay is in the game. Right. Here's how the stealth right. works, you know, like stuff like that. And they spend, like, a significant amount of time on their review in that versus, like, if you go to Kotaku or Polygon or something like that, like 75% of the review is about stuff that's more like how a certain person feels about certain topics more than like, is it objectively this good thing to play? So all my point is whenever you look at any review, you have to bear in mind the perspective of the person who doing the review. Yeah. And I don't think it's wrong for any reviewer to have a different opinion, <clears throat> but because if you can have a group of people who say a game is wonderful because of all the different perspectives, yeah, then you should be able to have someone on the other side who says, well, like if, if I'm a reviewer and I say don't play Doom Eternal because it's bloody and gory, so if you don't like, if you are, come from the same place as me, you won't want to play it. Yeah. I don't see a problem in having multiple perspectives of reviewers. Right. No, that's fair. And that's what, as a consumer, you should be, like, any time a game comes out that I really want to play, like The Last mm -hmm. of Us, I read as many reviews as I possibly can. I watch as many reviews as I possibly can yeah. because I don't trust any single person. Well, typically what I do is I don't even worry about what anyone's saying. I'll just wait for someone to have, like, a little bit of gameplay on YouTube, and I just watch it. And I go, okay, it looks good. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of I, I like to look for a pattern of the same complaints. Um, okay, yeah, because then that lets me know. But but they're usually tied to like mechanics or the how a game plays, like in terms of like how it runs. Um, maybe if you're like it, Batman Arkham Knight, I'll use for an example. I read a bunch of reviews for that game and all the reviews basically talked about like how the driving is just a constant thing that you have to do. And so if you don't like the driving and you'd rather be just Batman on foot and not have to drive around a freaking bat tank, then maybe this isn't for you. And I was like, okay, that's a fair point, but maybe it's not that bad. And then I bought the game and I've played it. And every time I get stalled on that game, it's because like I've just played too many bat tank segments and I hate it. And I'm like, okay, well those, those things were valid. Like that, there was a thing that extended across multiple, multiple reviewers that was of, of a complaint that they all basically had because it, it is an issue and it, it ended up being an issue for me. And so like I chose to ignore those things because why not? I wanted to play Batman, you know? Um, so I, I don't know. Ultimately it comes down to, even if you're somebody that like likes to read reviews and consults a bunch of reviews, maybe a game just clicks for you too. You know? Yeah. Maybe there's a thing <clears throat> that, that you just really like. I just, I'm for openness of all opinions. If you don't like someone's opinion, you can just not go to them. Yeah. Is there a group of people who are making money off of, or making, <laughs> getting clicks off of hate? Maybe. Probably. But there's, I don't think that's just, um, I think that's a left and right type of thing. 
I don't think that's just one side. I think that's no, both yeah. sides. I mean, I mean, but that's that's just me. That's just human nature, though. I yeah, mean, that's like a documented thing. Even like the cable news uh, boom, whenever like CNN and Fox News and all those places started to come out and stuff, like they consistently just needed constant news, so they would just start pandering, like. Slowly, they would pander to more like sensational stuff where it'd be like, well, we're going to show the OJ trial all day, you know? I heard, yeah, I remember that. You know, because it got people's eyes and stuff. But like how how relevant was it to like most American adults' actual lives compared to like what, what else they could be reporting on? Probably not that much. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, the, the evidence, we're way out in the weeds here and we're beginning to get towards the running a little long. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> relatively speaking. Yeah, I, let's but, just let's uh, wrap it up. Yeah. I'll, I'll just say... It doesn't... It's not profitable to be uh, positive. Right. Unfortunately. Well, we're, we're, we're rational problem-solving creatures, right? We want to fix things, so whenever we... We hear about an issue, we go, "Oh, why is it that way?" Let's that shouldn't be, and then we get upset and want to fix it, you know. And that that gets us more happy than like, if look the, at how many puppies this new shelter d- got adopted this weekend. But you know? I mean, I don't know. I uh, there's <laughs> it's just really discouraging. I mean, I don't watch news or anything because there isn't anything positive in it. You know, yeah, and I mean, I do appreciate that there. Uh, oh man, I can't remember. There was on one particular news program. I'm not advertising for anybody anyway, but I can't remember who it was. But I, you know, my parents used to wa- watch, and I would. They would try to put in at the end of every, and at the end, which is cool, of every night's broadcast, they would try to focus on something positive. Yeah. that was going on, which is cool. Uh. But like, I don't know. Is positive news just not news? I mean, like, is it is it news? I think that's still the encouraging thing. Is that if all the news is bad, it's because bad things are news because they're they stand out. If 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 everything was bad, then the good things are news because they stand out. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I think it's like, <clears throat> I think there's people that have the view of like, well. The news can be an opportunity for change, to change mm. people's minds and make them act. And so if you focus on but, these positive things, they're kind of fluff in comparison to, because but, these are already things that are happening. These are already good things that are happening. But my, my point is, I feel like it's, <clears throat> I see what you're saying, and mm. that's a good point, but I think, the, I think people are good. I think the world is a really good place, and I think... People see the negative so much that they're so convinced. But if you go out there and you walk around and you talk to anybody, yeah, there's some bad apples, but most people are just cool. Yeah. That's fair. So I think that's a a positive way to end the episode (laughs) is that people are cool. Like I know a lot of people on the internet are like, oh, people suck because you want to look cool. Grow up like people are cool. Yeah, most people are actually really nice people. On that note, uh, you guys are cool. <laughs> yes, and we love you. Yes, and we hope that you think we're cool. Yes, and you like should like and subscribe. subscribe and comment <laughs> and comment, like and, talk. Talking and, is cool. And maybe <clears throat> come check us out on Patreon. That's all we're saying. Just come check us out on Patreon. But thank you. That's it for our, this week's episode. We hope you had a great time. We certainly did. Uh, yeah, we certainly did. Certainly, <laughs> certainly, we certainly uh, did, did Joseph. <laughs> uh, we had a great time talking with you guys, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Next we- week, and uh, don't forget Tuesday nights uh, on our Twitch channel tonight. When you're listening to this, time travel. <laughs> yes, <laughs> to- tonight. Damn, I can't. I can't do it. It doesn't work. <laughs> Anyhow, thanks, guys. Take it easy. Peace. Be easy. Be easy. <laughs>